Thank you. Archbishop, my lords, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this evening's lecture, which is hosted by the school's Hellenic Observatory. Over the years, we've been pleased to welcome many senior political and public figures. We've hosted prime ministers, foreign ministers, finance ministers, and many other leading public figures. Overwhelmingly, they've been from Greece. We have, however, been pleased to host a number of ministers from Cyprus. And of course, the school has been very pleased to uh, call Cyprus's first Nobel Prize winner one of its own. As it were, we have the, the London School of Economics has nationalised Professor Chris Pissarithas, I think. <laughs> but this is the first time that we've had a lecture from a president of Cyprus. And we're delighted to welcome uh, Mr. Nikos Anastasiadis uh, this evening. In fact, we're welcoming him back to the school because he first came to speak here in November 2012, when he was still in opposition. Far be it from me to suggest that uh, giving a lecture at the London School of Economics whilst in opposition contributed somehow to his election <laughs> as president <laughs> of the Republic of Cyprus. I should uh, explain the London School of Economics does not do self-effacing modesty. <laughs> Uh, but the, the president has had a long and distinguished public career. He studied public law, sorry, he studied maritime law uh, in London and practiced, he has uh, practiced law since 1972. He became leader of the Democratic Rally Party in 1997 and he was elected president of Cyprus almost a year ago now. The president is making an important visit to London. And I'm pleased to note that he's accompanied this evening by several senior members of his administration. I'm delighted to uh, welcome the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Finance, and the Minister of Commerce with us this evening, as well as other senior members of the government. Now, Cyprus is important to the school, and it's important to the Hellenic Observatory. We've developed a strong research programme on Cyprus, We've hosted a number of distinguished fellows and we've organised a number of successful public events on Cyprus. And we look forward to sustaining this interest as life in the Eastern Mediterranean continues to be uh, of importance to the international community. This evening, of course, uh, is our biggest ever event on Cyprus. And let me take this opportunity of uh, thanking on your behalf, all of those colleagues across the school who have uh, contributed to organising tonight's events. It is, as you can see, a large lecture. We could have filled the lecture seats, uh, I'm sure, twice at least. Uh, the lectures uh, attracted a lot of uh, interest. So many colleagues across the school have uh, helped with the organisation. Uh, but none more, more so than my colleagues in the Hellenic Observatory, Ismini and Polly. I would like on your behalf to thank all of those colleagues who contributed to organising tonight's event. <laughs> now Cyprus is going through an important transition at present, of course. As a small island in a difficult neighbourhood, and perhaps as a former British colony, it has long seemed to have an excess of troubles. The division of the island remains a tragedy. More recently, the Euro crisis has hit Cyprus very hard. Beyond these matters, there is now, of course, a new ad agenda of the hydrocarbon deposits in the shores around the island. <coughs> We look forward to the President addressing these issues in his talk this evening and after the lecture there should be plenty of time for questions and answers. But the issues that the President is going to address this evening are also very important to Britain itself. The President 
I think, has uh, met our Prime Minister, David Cameron, this week. And I'm very pleased that, as you have seen, just uh, literally 30 seconds ago, uh, we have with us now Britain's Minister for Europe, David Liddington. And uh, before we begin the President's uh, presentation, could I invite David to say a few words of welcome? David Liddington, Minister for Europe. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Professor Featherstone, um, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's, it's a real pleasure to have been invited to say a few words alongside uh, President Anastasiades, who concludes what I think has been a, a pretty packed official visit to the United Kingdom tomorrow morning. Um, and I'm going to keep my remarks brief because I know you're much more interested in what he has to say rather than what I have to say. But I do want to say thank you, first of all, to Professor Featherstone and to the Hellenic Observatory for organising this event. And judging by the size of the audience this evening, there is a real awareness here in London of the growing profile of Cyprus on both the European and international stage, and we look forward, Mr. President, to hearing your analysis on this important theme. And the President's visit is a sign of the enduring partnership between our two countries. The United Kingdom and Cyprus are uh, two island countries at opposite ends of the European continent, but we share a history, but also we share values and we share interests. We share too the familiarity with our two countries of increasing numbers of our citizens. The thousands of British people who go to Cyprus, some so fall in love with the place that they, they stay on and many more visit for holidays and of course we have the tremendous uh, benefit in the United Kingdom of being home to a very large number of people of Cypriot origin and also this is a place where many more young men and women from Cyprus come to pursue their studies. And Cyprus today has an important part to play in the prosperity and security of the entire Eastern Mediterranean. She is uniquely situated <coughs> to perform a stabilizing role in the region, and we're already cooperating closely on a number of key foreign policy issues important to us both. You don't need to be an expert in strategy to appreciate the significance of Cyprus's potential in what sadly looks as if it's going to continue to be a troubled and turbulent part of the world. A stable European democracy in a turbulent region. For example, Cyprus's support for the international community's efforts to destroy Syrian stocks of chemical weapons is just one example of the important role that Cyprus can play in promoting security in its own neighbourhood. And that's the point about sharing responsibility to confront our common challenges Different countries contributing as and where they can, increasing their ambition as the world becomes more interconnected and more complex. And this is particularly relevant to the discovery of oil and gas finds in the eastern Mediterranean, finds that have the potential to transform Cyprus and its region. Cooperation on energy exploitation can lead to greater prosperity and security for all, and to greater diversity in energy supplies to the whole of Europe. We certainly to hope to work closely with Cyprus and United Kingdom's businesses, businesses have a wealth of experience and expertise to offer in this exciting area. I've already mentioned values based on a shared history. The UK and Cyprus work together too to promote and export those shared values as fellow members of both the European Union and, of course, of the Commonwealth, too. And we need to ensure that the European Union, to which we both belong, respects the diversity and the aspirations of each of its member states. And I, if I may say so, I, I know from 
conversations I have enjoyed with President Anastasiades both before and since he came to his present office as head of state, that he is incredibly deeply committed to Cyprus's place as a European country, as a partner in not just European economic cooperation, but in the work of building European civilization. So we're all here because of our interest in Cyprus and look forward, Mr. President, to your speech and the debate that it will be certain to stimulate. And I welcome your personal support to advancing the relationship not only between Cyprus and the United Kingdom, but between Cyprus and its wider neighbourhood and to advancing Cyprus's place in the international community. Thank, Thank you very much. Your Beatitudes, esteemed Provost uh, Kirkbridge. Honourable Minister of Europe, dear David, dear Professor Featherstone, another David, dear Dr. Economidis, where is Spiros? Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is indeed my honour and pleasure to be here today addressing such a distinguished audience in the prestigious academic institution of the London School of Economics. I last addressed LSE in November 2012 in my capacity as uh, the President of the Democratic Rally and the candidate for the Presidency of the Republic of Cyprus. And today I stand before you in my capacity as the elected President. Leaving the United Kingdom in late 60s, I was, or early 70s, I was a confident young man who was returning back to Cyprus, full of dreams and ready to follow the advice of the Beatles uh, to the literally follow the sun. But little did I know. I guess, as Oscar Wilde once said, I was not young enough to know everything. <laughs> well. I am not getting any younger, and I am not fighting time, despite the fact that my hair is a proof that sometimes we can win the battle against time. <laughs> but experience gained through, no, I'm not coloring them. But the experience gained through my life as a Cypriot politician has made me wise. Experience gives me the right to speak and to tell the truth about the constant fight of Cyprus to keep the sun shining over Cyprus. I promise to tell all about the role of Cyprus in the international scene as well as of my vision of the geopolitical role that Cyprus can undertake. I will be honest about the challenges we face, but I will be also optimistic about the future that lies ahead for Cyprus, a country small in size, just like David, but, the, but big in potential. And as the story of David and Goliath teaches us, Power is not always measured in size. Power is not uh, always a privilege of the big. The fact that the relevant parameters that uh, determine power in the international arena are the economic, military, diplomatic means and natural sources of a state, 
means that even states small in size, which will fill some of the above mentioned characteristics, can achieve peace, stability, their people's prosperity, and assume an important geopolitical road. Distinguished friends, there are sometimes, there are some basic elements that come to mind when we think about Cyprus, an island state in Eastern Mediterranean, a crossing point between Europe, Asia, and Africa, a geographic location eagerly sought after and which resulted to Cyprus uh, throughout its history, albeit some brief time periods, being under the control of various conquerors. A member state of the European Union at its uh, southeastern corner, a country affected so many times by its historically turbulent neighborhood. A country recently blessed together with its neighbors with the discovery of hydrocarbons, but, and sadly, the last divided EU country. The acknowledgement of these uh, attributes and the variability of some of them make one realize the dynamics linked to the geostrategic location of Cyprus and uh, that the geopolitical role of Cyprus is a dynamic process, the evolution of which depends not only to its geographic location, but mainly on the volatility on the environment in which it operates. In this regard, the geopolitical role that a country can assume is closely related to its foreign policy uh, orientations and objectives, including the ways and means of implementing them. Hence, it should be of no surprise that one of the main goals of my government for the last 11 months has been the conscious reorientation of the foreign policy of Cyprus based on a comprehensive and uh, extrovert approach that aims at, first and foremost, reaching a solution to the Cyprus uh, problem which could prove of immense benefit not only to Cypriots, but also to regional stability. Second, safeguarding the exploitation of our natural wealth and the consequential eternal and regional economic and political benefits. Third, enhancing our participation in all EU pillars and policies, including becoming an integral part of the European security system and establishing a credible presence and cooperation with the European Union member states. Fourth, actively contributing to building and promoting peace and security in our immediate region of Eastern Mediterranean, while at the same time deepening our bilateral relations with neighboring countries of the region. And fifth, upgrading our bilateral relations with the United Kingdom, United States and Israel without negatively affecting the already deep-rooted relations with other countries so as to create a grid of alliances in support of our foreign policies and economic goals. In order for the above to be implemented, there should be clarity and no deviation from our end objectives so as to firmly establish our credibility as a reliable partner to the international community and all old and new friends alike, both in terms of perceptions and implementations of actions. A most decisive guiding principle of this policy, which is in essence marks a strategic shift in our foreign policy dogma, is our decision to initiate procedures to join NATO's 
Partnership for Peace program, the PFP. Bear in mind that uh, we are the only EU member state which is not in the PFP. I consider this to be an anomaly which finally has to be rectified. Moreover, our, me our membership in PFP will be a positive development for the shared strategic security interests and the further development of the EU-NATO relations, while our integration to the Euro-Atlantic security landscape will mean that Cyprus will have an enhanced security role to the benefit of the region as a whole. Cyprus will be able to contribute with particular added value to the common foreign and security policy of the EU and NATO by seizing the prospects given by its geographic, geographic position and the geopolitical role it can carry out. We consider our contribution to effectively, effectively excuse me, tackling the asymmetric threats of terrorism illegal immigration, human drug and arms trafficking, as well as diffusing humanitarian suffering resulting from political turmoil to be an imperative responsibility of our foreign policy. Dear friends, Cyprus adopting a constructive, uh, predictable, a non-conflicting regional role is a primary, it's, it's a primary objective of my government and we have actively embarked on cultivating good relations with our neighbors and the international community with whom we share a perspective affinity as regards the vision of a state, peaceful and prosperous Eastern Mediterranean. The positive and stabilizing role that Cyprus can assume in the Eastern Mediterranean, especially in the areas of uh, combating terrorism, fighting the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, and providing humanitarian assistance, has in the past few months received extensive recognition. And we have proven that we can assume the role of being an interconnecting bridge between Europe, North Africa, the Near and Middle East, as well as a country that gives true credence to being a safe haven. This is most evident by our decision to provide refuge and humanitarian assistant, assistance from a crisis spillover, as well as a support base for the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons and the UN joint mission. We will continue to stand ready if it is deemed necessary, and hopefully I will, it will not, to contribute in an even more substantive, substantive manner to any international call to provide humanitarian aid and facilities to any third country national. Distinguished friends, a recent uh, most encouraging development in our area is taking place in the field of energy cooperation. The very promising potential of hydrocarbon exploration in the Levantine base, Basin requires that all countries in the region work closely together bilaterally and regionally. Cooperation in hydrocarbons development can have a positive spillover effect in the political relations between the Eastern Mediterranean countries, building the foundations for regional peace. After all, economic partnerships from an integral part of political synergies. This is all the more applicable in a region where stability has proven to be an expensive commodity as evident by acts of state violence or acts which uh, call into question sovereign rights 
enjoyed by states, sponsoring and harboring of secessionist or terrorist movements, religious fundamentalism manifested through terrorist attacks, forcible displacement of millions of people, hunger and distress which identify immigration flows, create demographic changes, and exert huge economic and social pressures to all those countries affected. In this respect, we all express grave concern over the effects of what we are witnessing, amongst others, the continuing unstable situation in Syria and the spillover effects and uh, unpredictable humanitarian and security challenges for the entire region, especially to Lebanon, the long-lasting Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the fragile security situation in Libya, and the separatist tendencies, most notably in the eastern part of the country, the ongoing terrorist attacks in Egypt, the current political instability in Turkey. At the same time, there have been some positive developments. For example, the interim nuclear agreement reached with Iran. It is of utmost importance for the sides involved, of course, to stick to the terms of the agreement and push for its implementation as soon as possible. Further, we greatly welcome the recent historic developments related to the 1.2 billion gas deal between Israel and Palestine and the potential decision to build a pipeline to transfer gas from Israel to Jordan. Although these agreements on their own are far from enough in bringing peace, they will help in contributing to growth, normalizing relations between the countries involved and positively assist to efforts toward regional energy security issues. After all, energy can and should not be a source of conflict, but a catalyst for conflict resolution and regional integration. In the countries of the Eastern Mediterranean, co cooperate in the hydrocarbon sectors, they will create common interests which will be best protected through bilateral and region mechanisms. Dear friends, my, government, my government's uh, domestic energy policy decisions are considered in terms of their larger impact on the energy security of Cyprus and uh, that of its neighbors, especially as uh, decisions made today will have a decisive effect on the quality of the region's future. In energy, policy, policy formulation we seek to explore synergies, optimize resource development, create opportunities and remove challenges, if any, for potential investors through interstate, bilateral and regional cooperation. At the bilateral level, Cyprus is pursuing the conclusion of agreements with the similar terms with all the coastal states with which it shares sea boundaries. The exclusive economic zone, the elimination agreements Cyprus has concluded with Egypt, Israel and Lebanon, have established not only the sea boundaries between Cyprus and its three neighboring states, but also the boundaries between the EU and the Middle East. These agreements also provide legal security to oil and gas international companies to freely pursue exploration and exploitation of hydrocarbons in the region. On the regional level, we aspire to bring interested stakeholders closer together through seeking opportunities not only for maritime boundary agreements and the joint development of potentially common hydrocarbons, but also, but also for shared cooperation on other issues 
of mutual interest, such as economy and trade. In addition, we have taken the initiative for the construction of onshore LNG terminal in order to realize the significant potential of becoming Eastern Mediterranean's energy hub. The transportation and liquefaction of gas produced by neighboring countries in the LNG terminal of Cyprus would allow neighboring countries to securely export gas for the EU and ASEAN markets. It will also help overcome commercial challenges for upstream field developments and uh, attract oil and international gas companies to the region. From a political perspective, uh, the Cypriot LNG terminal can be a hub for regional cooperation and a vehicle for regional dialogue between the countries of the Eastern Mediterranean and at the same time serve as a direct link of the region with the EU. In this process, there are no zero sum games. The question should not be whether to embark on this joint project, but when. And the time is now. The main guiding principle is that the mutual benefit is of, such, uh, is of much higher importance and collectively more rewarding compared to any singular benefit. To this end, we would welcome the prospect of all our neighbors sharing this vision. We also strongly hold that not only for our immediate neighbors, but most certainly for our partners in the European Union, the presence of hydrocarbon resources in the Eastern Mediterranean will contribute towards greater energy security for Europe, which is increasingly short of sources of energy. Further, the identity and means of Cyprus, including its, its uh, extensive strategic know-how of the region, in conjunction with the fact that we boast not to be burdened by heightened agendas as we have been enjoying very good relations with all countries in the region and we have not been an involved part in the challenges that still separate some of our neighbors offer the potential to our EU partners to use Cyprus as a facilitator linking them to our partners in our region, immediate neighborhood or region, and possibly beyond in advancing towards greater energy security and broader economic security and stability. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished friends, when uh, talking about the importance of achieving peace and stability in our immediate neighborhood and the means through which it can be achieved, I could not ignore to stress the significance and the consequential multiple benefits that the solution of the long-lasting Cyprus problem and the normalization of our relations with Turkey would bring. First and foremost, a viable and lasting solution would be to the best interest of the people of Cyprus, Greek and Turkish Cypriots, and they are longing, and they are longing, sorry, to live in a normal and prosperous European country. At the same time, while one might argue that the normalization of our relations with Turkey, including full respect to our efforts to exercise our sovereign rights to explore and potentially exploit the resources in our exclusive economic zone, and the Cyprus solution on, the other, on, on their own would not be enough in the transformation of the region and in reaching durable solution to long-standing complex problems. I remain convinced that these developments will undoubtedly have a very important collateral influence on achieving and maintaining a much needed environment of stability and peace in the region. In parallel, 
a reunited Cyprus, fully respecting the fundamental freedoms and human rights of all its citizens, will also prove a great value of the development of the EU-Turkey relations, including its security dimension. And despite our different geostrategic aspirations, the combination of the above-mentioned benefits would help both countries fulfill their geographical destiny and geopolitical role to the mutual benefit for the people of Cyprus, our neighborhood, the EU, and the, evidently the international community. On our own part, I want to assure you that we are determined to rise the challenge of our historic responsibility and to our utmost with the aim of providing a more stable, more prosperous, and more reconciliatory future in the region in which Cyprus is an inexplicable part of, so that our legacy is remembered for all the right reasons. Dear friends, some have argued that the economic challenges that Cyprus is currently facing can be set back to the path for growth and peace and uh, the geopolitical role we aspire to undertake. However, let us not forget that during our recent history and following the Turkish invasion of 1974, Cypriots had to fight and struggle for survival even under more adverse circumstances and have become known for being resilient and easily adaptable, or should I say, adjustable to dire conditions emerging even stronger than before. Henceforth, the Cypriot society has been at an inflection point in its uh, contemporary history as it bears witness uh, to a, a parroting shift uh, that calls for readjustment and evolution. And we are proud to say that uh, have risen to these challenges and we are determined to thoroughly follow through the relevant recovery program. Reforming our economy provides us with an opportunity to seek development through sustainable means. With this opportunity, allow me to publicly express my gratitude for the swift assistance and sharing of best practices provided by the United Kingdom in the banking system and in restructuring the public sector, which has proven indispensable and is uh, much appreciated. We look forward in furthering cooperation with British competent authorities with the aim of further increasing the, product, the productivity and competitiveness of our economy. And of course, I could not ignore the very historic uh, agreement we have uh, signed yesterday, which allows the owners of property within the base area, the British base area, to development. We're talking about 200 square kilometers. It's uh, a sign that our ties are becoming stronger and stronger. And uh, so I have to express my sincere thanks, warm thanks of all the people of Cyprus to the British government, to his, Her Majesty's government, and of course to the Prime Minister, David Cameron. Dear friends, we aim to achieve gradual recovery of the Cyprus economy by 2015. In the effort, our decisiveness open market economy and our highly educated workforce are valuable assets. Our Cyprus retains unique clusters of expertise and service capability to support key growth sectors such as shipping, uh, differentiated tourism investments and energy, including, as I have already mentioned, the development of significant natural gas deposits in Cyprus exclusive economic zone. I also draw inspiration from what Winston Churchill once said. 
the pessimists sees difficulty in every opportunity, whereas the optimists sees the opportunity in every difficulty. Cypriots choose to be optimists. Cypriots who are able to grasp the opportunity presented to them in the maritime zones of Cyprus and in the seas of our neighboring countries. We recognize the difficulties in this opportunity, but we also acknowledge that this is the opportunity for peace, stability, and prosperity. This is time to turn the crisis into an opportunity. Distinguished friends, I will not pledge for riches, but I promise that Cypriots will fight for peace and prosperity. I am confident that on that promise, Cyprus will deliver. We will take the advice given by great English mind, William Shakespeare, who invited people to be great in act as you have been in thought. Cypriots make what Cyprus is today and what it can become tomorrow. Cyprus is neither David or Goliath. What is Cyprus? I could not have said it better than George Seferis, the poet, when he wrote that Cyprus is a place where miracle still works. I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that Cyprus choose to follow the sun and work to make miracles happen. Thank you very much for your attention.